The minimum recommended servers that you should have in a cluster is three, but a small network can be difficult to justify an extra third server if you only actually need two. So for instance, let's say you purchase a hypervisor and that can run all of your virtual machines, but you do want some redundancy, in which case you purchase a second server and you create a cluster between them. The problem is, if one of those servers stops working for whatever reason, there's only one server left in the cluster, and what you'll find in the case of Proxmox VE, for instance, is you can't even actually log into the cluster. Now, fortunately, what Proxmox do allow you to do is to create a third server, which is essentially just a voting server. It doesn't need to be particularly powerful. It could be something like a Raspberry Pi, for instance. But what that can do is to cover you against a failure of one of those two servers so that the cluster is still operational, but it means you don't actually need a third hypervisor, which would otherwise just sit there doing nothing. But how do you actually set up this additional server in a Proxmox cluster? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, because that's what we'll be going over. Now I'm going to make an assumption that you either already have a cluster which contains two servers, or you at least know how to create a Proxmox VE cluster. If not, then I do have a video that shows you how to do that. Now, I do say two servers because the assumption is you're dealing with a small network. You can actually have larger clusters and still use one of these external uh, voting computers, but typically it's going to be aimed at networks where you just got two servers, for example. You don't want to pay all that extra money for a third hypervisor if you're not going to use it. So in this example, I do have two nodes in my cluster and that's it. If I had a third server and I tried to do the installation, it would actually refuse to install the software. So that's something to bear in mind. Proxmox VE is based on the Debian operating system. And the software that we need to set up our third computer, which is going to be acting as an external voting machine, needs to be running Debian as well. Now, what that computer is really depends because it could be a virtual machine or it could be a physical computer. Now, when I say it could be a virtual machine, it can't be a virtual machine within your actual Proxmox cluster. It would have to be on another hypervisor, maybe even on a NAS, for example. But there is a quite a bit of flexibility as long as it's running Debian. Now, in this example, I'm actually gonna be doing this on a Raspberry Pi operating system. Now, granted it is an actual virtual machine, but the process is just gonna be the same. Now to set up our third server, which is gonna be acting as an external voting machine, we need to install some additional software first. So I've opened up a terminal session and I'm gonna tell it to install some additional software. So sudo apt install, and it is coral sync dash unit D, and I'll just hit return. I'll just say yes to install that software. And then off it goes and installs the actual software that we need on this computer. Now, as part of this setup process, Proxmox VE will actually need remote access into this third computer that we've set up, and they'll be using SSH and the root account. So we need to make some changes to this computer to allow that access. So I'm going to edit the actual config file. So sudo nano slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. I'm just going to go right to the end just to make my life easier. And I'm going to permit root login using SSH, which usually it's a bad um, security practice uh, to allow remote access using the root account. But the trouble is that's the account that Proxmox is using. So I'm going to save that change. Next thing we're going to restart the actual SSH service. Now in this particular case with this Pi, because it's brand new, uh, it's just been installed and set up. The actual service is disabled. It was stopped anyway, but I'll tell it to restart it. And then we're going to just double check just to make sure that it's actually up and running now. Yeah, so that's now running. 
So that's just something to bear in mind is that we want to make sure that the actual service is actually available. Now, unless you actually set the root account password yourself on this third computer, I would strongly recommend changing it. One thing, it's not a good idea to have a default password on a computer, but also we need to know what the root account password is going to be as part of the actual setup process later on. So I'm in a terminal session on the computer and I'm going to type in sudo PASWD and then root. So in other words, we're saying we want to change the password for the root account. I'll hit return. It doesn't ask me for the old password. It just wants to ask for a completely new password. So I'll type that in. And then I need to confirm that. Hit return. And there we go. I've now set the actual root account password to one that I want to use. Now, the next thing to do is to install some additional software on the actual hypervisors themselves. Now, this has to be done on all of the actual nodes that you've got within your cluster. In my case, I've only got two, but for demonstration purposes, I'll just do this on node number one because the process is the same. So I've logged in remotely uh, using SSH into node number one and I've logged in as root. I'm going to copy and paste in the command that I need to install the software. So it is apt install corosync q device. Then I'll hit return. Uh, say yes to install the software. And off it goes and installs that for me. Well, I've installed the software on the other hypervisor. So now both Proxmox servers have got this software installed. The next thing to do is to actually set up the Q device as that third server is referred to as, but we're actually going to be doing it from our actual Proxmox server here. So I'm on node one and I'm going to basically paste in a command, which is PDECM Q device setup, and then the IP address of that actual uh, computer, that third computer that we set up earlier. So in my case, 172.16.19.15. So I'm going to hit return. Now, because it's the first time that the actual computer has connected using SSH, it's asking me to verify a fingerprint. So I'm just going to say yes for this particular demo just to make life easier. Now it wants to know what's the actual password for the root account. So I need to put in the password for that. Hit return. And off it goes and sets that actual device up. That includes transferring over the actual SSH keys. And there you go. That's our third computer now set up. And with our software now installed and our Q device set up, the next thing to do is check what the status is of our cluster. So I'm going to put in a command PBE CM status and then I'm going to hit return and it comes back and it actually tells me some useful information down here so it's expecting three votes highest expected three total votes three this is the key part here to achieve quorum you needed two actual votes and that's why it would be a problem if you had two servers and one of them went out of action um, you'd have only one server available but it needs two to achieve quorum now, as you can see lower down, you can see there's a bit more details about membership information, how we've got two actual nodes and you can tell what they're capable of. Whereas right at the bottom, we've just got our third node essentially called a queue device, which basically just doesn't do anything but voting. But it means we've now actually got the capability of actual three servers to be able to give us the minimum number of required servers for a cluster. Now, I suppose the $64 billion question here is, well, what have you actually achieved by adding this third computer, uh, a queue device or external voting server, if you will? Well, for one thing, before I had two nodes in a cluster, and if I only had one node operational, I wasn't able to actually log in to this actual uh, management system. Even though one hypervisor was still up and running, I just couldn't gain access. And that's because to achieve quorum, it's insisting there's a minimum of two actual servers available. Now you can actually downgrade that requirement, but it's not really recommended, especially during normal operational um, situations, because if those two servers lose access to one another, it can cause all sorts of problems if you've got it set up so that only one computer needs to make the decision. So what I've done as a part of a test is I've actually uh, turned off node number two. 
I'm going to log out of this system. Now, before I wouldn't have been able to log in at all. So I should now be able to log back in, even though node number two is actually turned off. Yeah, I can now log into the system. So that third computer is providing the necessary second vote to allow me to still carry on uh, and gain access to this actual hypervisor. Now, granted, I really want that second node up and running as quickly as possible, but that's much better than just having two servers and being stuck in that situation where I can't really do anything at all until that second server is recovered. Now, just to demonstrate, if we actually go back to our actual um, Raspberry Pi here, if I actually shut this down, so that's going to actually shut down the actual hypervisor, uh, the actual third computer that I've got. If we do PB uh, CM status here. So that's got, we're now in a state where we've got one node and one Q device, but you can see here, all we've got is one server. We, we can't achieve quorum because we've only got one computer. So if I log back out, I should be in exactly the same situation as I was before. Yeah, it's just going to sit there spinning its wheels because you have to have a minimum of two computers for that activity. So even though I've still got SSH access at the moment, I'm kind of stuck until either that node 2 comes back online or my Q device comes back online. But the key point is I can actually get away with just having two hypervisors and a much lower powered device such as a Raspberry Pi or a VM on a NAS, for example. So that should save me quite a bit in costs and um, in terms of the actual you know purchase of the actual third computer but also in terms of the actual running costs as well well thanks for making it to the end of this video i really do hope you found it useful if so then do click the like button and share as that'll help get the video out to more people who might find it useful as well if you've got any comments or suggestions please post those in the comment section below and if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, then yes, do subscribe. Just remember to set the bell icon to actually send you notifications when new content gets released. Although I also post to Twitter as well as Facebook. If you'd like to help the channel and support it, you can actually make contributions through PayPal and buy me a coffee. I've also got links to Patreon and there's also the joint membership option for YouTube itself. Patreon and YouTube members do have the option to actually benefit from early access as well. But above all, Many thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.